What's up, y'all? I'm in my hotel room. I made it to Detroit late last night. So I am in Detroit, Michigan right now. Um, tickets are still... <coughs> oh, excuse me. Tickets are still on sale. Still on sale <laughs> for Detroit. So just email me, Chanel Jasmine at Gmail. Uh, the event in Detroit is at 6 p.m. tonight. Um, <coughs> see, I ate some peanuts I should have waited and drank some water. Let me see here. I'm in my hotel room, guys. Give me a second. <coughs> you know how you eat something that doesn't go down right? Let's see if that helps. Some orange juice. Um, so yeah, I, I made it. I'm in Detroit. Again, thank you to everyone in Chicago that came out. Uh, to the brunch. I'm in, um, in Detroit now. Detroit, today is Sunday. Detroit is tonight at 6 p.m. We're in Farmington Hills right now. I'm in my hotel room. So um, you have time to get a ticket if you want to come out to the Detroit uh, support group this evening. Um, I wanted to do a follow-up video to this one. And by the way, um, you guys, I will be in Toronto, Canada, Saturday, September 24th, in Houston, Texas, Saturday, October October 1st. So I'm going to be posting um, my promotional flyers for that. But I'm selling tickets for those too. But I had to do a follow-up, um, a part two, because I posted a video yesterday. You know, my face was beat and looking pretty and... um. I was explaining three traits to look for in a narcissistic friend. Um, I said passive aggressiveness. I said gaslighting and the victim mindset. And for the most part, you know, you guys got it. You guys understood the assignment. But it's always a couple people in the comments that are toxic. They expose their fucking narcissism. And they try to gaslight and and... They try to trigger me to entertain their bullshit. And um, I was accused of being a bad friend. Now, the, yesterday, the video <laughs> um, that I po I gave two different examples of two different situations I was in where both um, I had friends in both situations and um, they used their passive aggressiveness and victim mindset to gaslight and bait me into further explaining myself and, and why. Like the first situation I said, you know, um, last year when I was in Chicago, um, my friends live in Chicago and they're from Chicago. They have tons of friends. And what happened was um, ever since I started doing this narc abuse, domestic violence stuff, they kind of like disappeared. They're not really pushing me or you know, supporting me I was doing hip hop related events prior to this. Like I owned a hip hop magazine and they loved helping me with that because it was, uh, you know, I knew all the rappers. I knew all the, you know, people in the in New York hip hop scene and I was well connected and they wanted to be a part of the hip hop stuff. But ever since I devoted myself to doing the Lord's work, God's work and doing this narc abuse, domestic violence stuff. Oh, everybody disappeared. And my friends in Chicago, they were one of the people that disappeared. So I had an event in Chicago, a seminar, very successful. I probably had a, this is one of my biggest turnouts. I had about 50, 50 to 55 girls that showed up and it was awesome. So people in my comment section got mad at me and said I should have reached out to my friends when I got to Chicago for help because they got pissed off. They saw that I was in Chicago. They were stalking my social media. They saw I was out having a good time with other friends and they had an attitude. But what was so crazy, they didn't say nothing to me while I was in Chicago. They did not reach out to me while I was in Chicago. They didn't inbox me, text me and say, hey, sis, you know, we see you're in town. If there's anything we can do for you or anything you need, we're here. They didn't do that. I went to Jamaica on vacation after I left Chicago, right? The moment I get in Jamaica and I'm having a wonderful time, I'm relaxing on my vacation, they bring the drama. They, they're they watching my social media. They know I'm in Jamaica. Now they, they here they come with the drama. Why did you contact us while you was in Chicago? Why do you? 
so there were some of you that got in the comment section and said I was a bad friend for not reaching out to them while I was in Chicago. So I, you know, it's always, it's always a couple of y'all that are real slow and you, 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 you lack comprehension skills. Prior to my event in Chicago for several, several months, I busted my ass to promote, promote my event. I live in New York. So for me to have this wonderful turnout in Chicago, that was blood, sweat, and tears that I invested. Nobody helped me to promote my event in Chicago, or at least my, my closest friends. These are friends for several years. They're following me on social media. They're watching me promote my event. They know I'm coming to Chicago. Okay, let me throw that bone out there. So they're sitting back watching, watching, watching. I'm promoting the hell out of my event. I'm doing the work and I'm not asking anyone to help me. You see me, you know, wh why won't you take the, the flyer and repost it to your social media? You have a lot of friends in Chicago. They didn't do that. They didn't spread the word to, to they, they didn't help me promote my event or nothing. They didn't help me book the catering. They didn't help with shit. And I wasn't expecting them to. Because if I were to expect anything out of anyone, that would make me toxic. You don't expect shit out of anybody. I don't care who it is. I said, I will get it done. And I absolutely did. I had a, a huge turnout in Chicago. Not only did I have a huge turnout, I had tons of people that wanted to help. I had people that, hey, let me take you to dinner. Let me take you to the country club. Let me take you here. Let me drive you around. You, you don't know how you've changed my life. Let me help you. So the help came. See, this is what God does. You know, God, God will send people to you uh, um, to help you. Just like the devil, the devil sends people too. But I, I, I never had an issue with that. I don't care what city and state I go to. There's always people. Can I please help? Can I please anything you need? Can I drive you around? Can I take you to dinner? I, that's never an issue for me. Now, the friends that I had in Chicago that have been living there for several years and have all these friends, they didn't bother to promote. They didn't even repost the flyer. I'm, I'm promoting this on social media for several months prior to my event. And they're sitting there watching me. They don't, they don't help promote it or nothing. They don't tell their friends. They don't help me spread the word. I'm putting in the work to do all this by myself. So you mean to tell me when it comes down time to, to, to do my event, I'm in Chicago. Why would I even call or look them up? They didn't help me with shit. They didn't even reach out to me and say, we see you're in town. If there's anything we could do, we're here. Love you. Bye. They didn't even give me that. They sat very quietly. They stalked my social media, saw that I got the job done, saw that my event was a success. And then I went on to vacation and they strategically and very carefully waited till I got on vacation to start drama with me in my inbox about how I didn't call them when I was in town. They would have helped me. Shoulda, woulda, coulda helped me. Bitch, you didn't help me. And I don't kiss no ass. And there's a term I want to teach y'all. There's a terminology. There's a word called gatekeeping. Get a lot of toxic, narcissistic people do this thing called gatekeeping. And gatekeeping is they don't want to give up their resources. They want to, they want you to beg and kiss their ass to get to some resources because they hold, they have all the knowledge to where everything is. You don't have to do that. God is your gatekeeper. Go to God for your resources because a real friend is not going to put you through loops and, and hurdles to get some, some information and resources. They're going to offer it up from day one. That's why I didn't call them. I don't kiss ass. God will provide. God will send people to help me get shit done. So for those of you that are very slow to comprehension, um, this is called self-entitlement behavior and gatekeeping. When you have narcissistic friends who want you to kiss their ass and chase behind them, if they really wanted to help me, they would have several months before my event, they would have promoted the, the my event. They would have reposted my flyer on their social media. They did not. They would have spread my flyer around to all their friends. They did not. Therefore, why would I call them when I come to town for help? I needed the help promoting the event several months in advance. So for those of you that, sl for, that are slow to comprehension, I don't owe nobody shit. And I don't expect nothing out of anybody. People will expose themselves if you just give them enough space and time to do it. Okay? So um, that doesn't make me a bad friend. And had they not approached me and started the drama in Jamaica, 
I would still be receptive in our friendship. I still would, uh, I, I, I didn't care that they didn't help me. I wasn't reading into it that much. They were still my friends. I didn't cut them or block them. It wasn't until they did that bullshit and contacted me while I'm on my vacation to start up a whole argument about why I didn't reach out to them. I said, this is toxic. And then you wait till I get on vacation. You're overstepping boundaries. You're, you, you know, you're violating me. I'm, I'm trying to enjoy my vacation. And you, you are 40 something year old adults bringing this bullshit to me. You, 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 no, bye. Goodbye. Now, the second scenario I gave y'all was, um, I talked about a male friend of mine, you know, he's gay and He's another one. Now, this is the flip side. He did a lot of passive aggressiveness because I cut him off and I never explained to him why I cut him off because it's more of a character issue than an incidental issue. And his email, he, he went straight to playing the victim because he didn't have all the pieces. He didn't know what was going on. So he went, immediately went into victim mode and said, well, I feel used because, you know, you came here. I hosted you in my home. And mind you, like, I got to explain this because y'all are slow. When I flew in, he lives in Atlanta. When I flew into Atlanta, I stayed at an Airbnb. He fucking broke his neck. He said, I'm here. Oh my God. I ins he offered and insisted after I checked out my Airbnb, which I regret. I, I should have stayed there in my Airbnb the whole time and just rented a car like I always do. I don't depend on anybody. I get around by myself. I pay for everything. Um... I order the food. I get shit done by myself. I don't call on people. People got to literally say, Chanel, stop. Let me help you. Let my girlfriend last night, that pick, she picked me up from my, the airport in Detroit. She said, please don't let a few toxic people spoil it for everybody because we want to help you. We love you. It's genuine over here. We're never going to throw it back in your face. Like she said that to me last night. So what he did was, you know, I stayed in Air, Airbnb. I didn't want him picking me up from the airport. I didn't want to inconvenience him. Gas is high. Don't burn up your gas. I'll be fine. He offered and insisted. No, no, no. You can just stay with me. You, you get. I hate that. If you're going to offer and insist on doing things for me, I don't want to hear about it down the line. Don't throw it in my face. If we have a disagreement or... Why would you throw it back in my face? That says to me, it's not genuine. You you have an ulterior motive for, for, you know, hanging with me and helping me. That says a lot. I don't do that to people. If I offer my help and assistance to be there, why would I throw it back in your face? Why would I accuse you of being a user when I offered and insisted? And that's exactly what he did. And me and him, um, I, the only reason I stayed with him is because we were flying to another friend's house she lives in Texas. Um, she's a mutual friend and he booked my flight to, you know, we booked the same flight and we flew to my friend's house because her, you know, she, her daughter was having a graduation party. So it made sense for me to just stay with him. He insisted and he offered, but he accused me of saying, you know, I feel used because I hosted you in my house. Uh, um, and, and you no, the incident took place after not during when I stayed in Atlanta. It took place when we got to my friend's house and she lives in Texas. So you're jumping the gun. You're being impulsive. You don't have your facts together and you're exposing, you know, this, this, um, you feel used. Nobody used you. Nobody used you. And again, when I was telling y'all that's passive aggressiveness, that's victim mindset and that's gaslighting because he was trying to bait me into explaining myself and I was not ready to. And, and, and again, this, that's that self-entitlement shit. You're going to send an email and you're trying to figure out why I'm pulling away or why I'm cutting you off. You, this is the mature way of approaching the situation. You say, I don't know what happened. I really value our friendship. So if there's something that I did, I need to know, you know, cause I want to clear it up. I want to rectify things. Um, I'm going to give you your space when you're ready to talk. I'm here. That's the end of it. That's all you got to do and say, but all the extra stuff, well, I feel used and, and you did it. Did, did, did. You could have told me, no, I couldn't have told you toxic. You can't just out. Listen, I told you all this in several videos and I told you Dr. Romani and so many other therapists, the, the advice is you don't approach people about 
narcissistic people, toxic people, manipulative people. You cannot approach them on their behavior. You cannot out them on their behavior. This is a behavioral and character issue. It's not an issue where you did something. It's a one-time thing and I need to pull you to the side. And No, this is a character and moral issue. You cannot confront toxic people on a behavior that they've been doing for years. They're set in their ways, obviously. They're, they're, they're going to they're gonna be fucking uh, resentful for you trying to correct their character. That's just something you don't do. And I'm not the only person on here saying this. There's several videos. Just go, Dr. Romani. Dr. Romani has several videos on this. You don't call a toxic individual out on their fucking poor behavior and character. You just don't. You get away from them. You cut them off. So if I'm not ready to explain myself, that needs to be respected. If I'm not ready to engage in conversation or talk about it, that needs to be respected. Anyone that pushes me or tries to gaslight me into explaining myself, bitch, you're fucking toxic and I'm going to get away from you. And that's exactly what he did. And he sent me an email and he gaslit me, tried to accuse me. You know, he felt used and all that. This is too much. This is too much. I don't use anybody. And like I said, when I was in Atlanta, I introduced him to another female friend of mine. And she told me in front of his face, you should have called me. I would have helped you. Just call me. And I really regret. I should have went to her and never dealt with him and stayed in my Airbnb because that shit is not cool. If you're going to help again, helping me is not about me. I represent a bigger platform. I represent domestic violence. I represent narc abuse. I represent uh, black femicide. So when you're helping me, you're actually helping the victims and survivors. It's a, it's a huge, it's a bigger cause. It's so much bigger than me. And to throw that shit in my face because you're grasping at straws. I haven't had a conversation with you why I cut you off. Obviously something happened. Something happened and you need to wait until I'm ready and comfortable to talk about it. So to send me a fucking email and sit up and talk about how you feel victimized and how you feel used and how you and you don't have no no facts. You don't have nothing. That's passive aggressiveness. That's gaslighting, trying to start an argument instead of sitting back and saying, I don't know where we went wrong. Um, I love you. I value our friendship and I want to clear things up. When you're ready to talk, just reach out. No, that it, it, it wasn't. It, it was it was jumping the gun. It was being impulsive. It was being emotional. It was being passive aggressive. It was disrespecting my boundaries. It was grasping at straws, trying to fit, you know throw stuff out there because you don't have the answers. No, obviously something you did was very offensive, and you need to stop and say, "Whoa." Let me fall back. Let me just let her know that I love her. I'm here for her and I want to correct things. If something happened, I'll give her the time and space to come to me when she's ready to talk about it. That didn't take place in the email. The email was very, well, I feel used because I hosted you. Bitch, I didn't ask you. You, ins you damn near fucking insisted and offered. And when you get here to Atlanta, let me come get you and let me, don't do that. You cannot offer and break your neck and insist to help and do for people and then throw it in their face down the line that you're not, nobody's using you if you're offering and insisting to be there. And that shit is not cool to me. That's not friendship to me. That's, that's a transactional type of thing you're doing for me because you expect something out of me later down the line because for you to throw it back in my face, it's very telling that there's an ulterior motive and it, it's not genuine. It didn't come from the heart. So that, that is self-titled entitlement when people expect shit out of you and expect, I don't, I, you know, when it comes to toxic friendships, you don't expect nothing out of them, but when they start expecting shit out of you and when they start, um, you know, this toxic self-entitled behavior where you owe them something, you owe, I don't owe anybody anything and, I, and nobody owes me. And it's the same thing when I talk about the toxic abuse of parents, you don't belong to your parents. You belong to God. So, you know, why would you keep being loyal to abusive parents when they, they, they don't respect you? Why won't you cut them off? Why won't you distance yourself from them? You keep running back to only get abused. You don't belong to your parents. You belong to God. You don't owe them no loyalty. You owe, you can respect them and honor them from a distance, but to keep interacting with them, to allow them to abuse you out of loyalty, make it make sense.
So the same thing applies to friendship. You don't owe your friendship and don't you expect nothing out of them. I live in New York. Anytime my friends come to New York, I don't expect them to get in touch with me. That would be stupid of me to expect people when they come to New York to hit me. You don't got to do all that. You can, you can have a busy, fulfilling schedule while you're in New York and not contact me. And I will not love you any less. I will still love you. We will get up and spend time together in the future at a, at a later date. You don't have to always reach out to me. And I don't want to feel like I always have to reach out and report to, to my friends the same thing. This self-entitled behavior has to stop. Okay, the best types of friendships are free flowing where you allow your friends the space to be who they are and do what they want. And you're still there as a friend. You don't throw anything in their face. You don't expect nothing of them. You just you just you just allow the friendship to blossom and, and it's free flowing. But when there's all types of expectations and, um, you know, this and that and them throwing shit in your face, that's not a friendship. That's a transactional relationship. And, and it's very self-entitled. And I, I don't play that with people. I don't owe nobody anything because I don't go around demanding shit out of people. Now, if you offer and insist, which a lot of people do with me because they want to be a part of a greater cause for domestic violence, I, I, I you know, people got to say, please, let me help you. You don't, you don't got to do it. People do this to me all the time. But for someone to throw in my face after they offered and ins insisted to help me to throw in my face with, you know, they feel used. Oh, you're not a friend. You're, 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 you, you're a user. You're projecting to me that you're the real user. That's projection, by the way. Am I lying, y'all? Let me know in the comment section. Is that projection? To falsely accuse someone of being a user, using you when you offered and insisted to help them. You're only exposing your hidden, your hidden uh, agenda. You're the user. You're projecting onto me because I didn't ask for the help. I appreciate the help, but I didn't ask for it. You insist it. So you, you got to be careful of these little traps that, you know, people set for you, especially if they call yourself your friends. Pay attention to little stuff like that. So um, Detroit, Michigan, I'm here today. Hit me up if you want tickets. Um, I'm actually relaxing right now. I'm going to have some breakfast, but I love you guys. Thank you again, Chicago, um, Detroit. I'll see y'all later this evening. Spiritual whistleblower.